Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 22 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have as our special guest Katrina Dow. Katrina is the founder and CEO of Miko, a world leading data independence startup in the emerging personal data economy. Katrina speaks globally on privacy and data innovation and currently serves on two IEEE standards working groups, co-chair of the Personal Data and Privacy Committee, which is part of the Global Initiative for Ethical Considerations in the Design of Autonomous Systems and the chair for the new P7006 standard for Personal Data Artificial Intelligence Agent. Hi Katrina and Dave, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you both on the training show this week. Hi, Brad. Hi, David. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to be on. Looking forward to talking about training and uh, how we can do privacy or privacy, whatever you want, wherever you are. <laughs> okay. In, the, in this week's show, we'll be talking about how will the need for data privacy or privacy affect training over the next two to three years? Over to you, David. Yeah, so ultimately, this is this is really good to have Katrina on the show because I think it's a really interesting question. So ultimately, privacy is becoming kind of an issue at several layers. We have the regulatory layer where people have to be compliant with the law. We have the security and governance layer where people have to deal with right enabling technology to make sure things are kept private. And then we have the configuration to keep things private at the PII level or the anonymized data level or however we're going to define it, now, which is a science into itself. And then we have kind of the policy uh, level, the ability to kind of do the right policies within the company. So they're ensuring that the people who are actually reading the policies, and most people don't read the policies, are gonna be uh, relatively assured that our data is not gonna be sold, our data is not gonna be shared with other people that we don't want it shared to. And these three things are basically mysteries within most companies. And the reason they're mysteries is because people aren't trained uh, around them. We certainly have lawyers that understand the regulatory issues, and we have lots of geeky people that understand the uh, uh, security issues and governance issues. And we have people who are just kind of forming policy, but there's no one who's an expert in the area. And I kind of find that it, it's, it's a big missing, missing gap. Uh, as we're moving into cloud, and it's something I think we need to fill up with lots of people who understand this stuff. And we need to have some decent training out there to really kind of get the people trained up and coached up and how this stuff is going to be done. So, so, so Katrina, where are we now and what, what needs to be done to kind of fulfill the needs that we're missing right now? I think, David, that's a, a great introduction. And, and there, are, there are so many new challenges, I think, from, um, from a training and development point of view. So, so maybe one of the ways to sort of anchor this is there has been a growing movement that initiated out of Canada called Privacy by Design. And it's essentially saying that you, that you align the design of your products, your services, your technology um, to either um, build in, uh, say, the regulatory requirements, or more importantly, what, what we would argue uh, from a MECO perspective is you build in what your business model is. In other words, What's the, what's the ethical perspective that you as an organization have taken around your customers' data rights, um, their right to privacy, and therefore what are you, what, how are you going to build that into the design of everything you do? Um, over the weekend, uh, one of my uh, identity colleagues was at an identity conference in the United States. And she must have downloaded um, an airline app. And I'm not going to say which American airline it was. But um, when she installed the app, the app required her to agree to provide all device and app history, all access to identity, calendar, location, phone, photos, media, files, camera, Wi-Fi connection, Bluetooth connection, device ID, and all call information. So that's a very interesting ask for an airline that probably wants to remind you that um, you're boarding in 10 minutes. Um, and, and so I think one of the challenges that we have right now is, you know, I would say a developer has gone, hey, you know, we can get access to all of that. So in the app package, why, why don't we just do that? And so if we start to think about training, if we start to think about privacy by design, if we start to think about cloud architecture, 
we start thinking about app architecture, we really need to step back and say, okay, what's the service we're providing? And what's the value proposition that would allow us to ask something that's in context and to show why that would be really meaningful? And where in the customer onboarding do we start to surface those things? And, and I would argue the minute you download an app, asking for all of that information is not the place that you start. And so, you know, we, we've got training challenges that are obviously um, going to cascade down from business model, strategy, down to the design of products and services. And then at the engineering level, we need to help engineers understand how they actually implement those things in a, in a, in a contextual way. Yeah, I think that uh, ultimately we're just missing the knowledge out there and how to put those things together. I think that uh, you have a business that obviously focuses on that and guides people through that. Uh, but there's, you know, one of you and there's probably a need to have 20,000 of you out in the industry right now. And so, and this is something I'm not necessarily focused on. So I'm a, you know, cloud architect by trade and do the, you know, cloud, you know, industry expert, expert stuff. And so while I can dally and data privacy issue, there's a huge deep dive that really needs to occur because when you break it down and start peeling back the onion, there's legal issues, there's a governance issue, security issues, how the technology is linked to, get, linked to different regulatory compliance, different encryption standards, utilization of HIPAA healthcare, what PI information needs and things like that. And a very few people that understand it. And, and even... Um, and I think the, the reality is, is that if I, you know, I did a course on Linda, I did courses on Linda on, on, on privacy, it probably wouldn't get a lot of hits because I think people don't really have linked the fact that they need the training and they need the expertise for the actual training and expertise. I think it's something that's going to kind of hit everybody um, in a big way toward the end of this year. And we're going to start seeing the training courses emerge and certification emerge and AWS is probably going to have data privacy architect you know, certification and so is Microsoft and so is Google. And that's all well and good for their particular cloud technologies because I think people are starting to ask now. And so <clears throat> it's kind of a, it's kind of very much like cloud security was in, you know, five years ago. It wasn't really front and center. A lot of people were kind of getting uh, schooled in it and knew it was coming and the technology was changing, but now it's really kind of a hot skill that you have in the space and it's actually uh, dependent on you being successful with any kind of cloud implementation. I think the same thing here. I think we're going to have, you know, data privacy architects, data, data privacy compliance specials, data, data privacy legal uh, uh, legal parallels, and another is not necessarily attorneys, but people kind of understand the laws, are able to advise on the laws, people understand the tool sets, things like that. And there's a huge gap now where the point that I think we're going to get, a, a lot of companies are going to get in trouble because they don't have the talent they need and they can't train the talent they need to keep them out of trouble. So what do you think? Yeah, no, David, I completely agree. I, I think I think there is strategic risk, uh, either because the talent is not available or there isn't, there hasn't been, say, over the last two or three years, enough of a um, of a, uh, an incentive, either through C-suite or through market, to, to encourage people to be getting that additional training and capability. Um, I, I, I know talking to some of my European colleagues, certainly around the General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR as it's known, um, you know, they're already, you know, everyone's saying there aren't enough lawyers, there aren't enough data privacy officers um, actually to meet the immediate demands where, where companies are starting to look at what their immediate compliance requirements are. But I think the other thing that, um, that you've highlighted, particularly from a training and development point of view, is the privacy aspect is around the, the immediate collection. And I think one of the things that um, we're not talking about right now uh, is, is really the downstream consequences of data collection, cloud analytics, and um, the ongoing access to information that may have been collected at, at one point for a single purpose that is now being repurposed. And so there is also a really important um, uh, requirement for education, not to be not just be around privacy by design in terms of the collection of data initially, but the downstream consequences. So let's say we collected data here compliantly, 
and we collected data there compliantly. Well, what are our internal um, uh, architectural requirements around how that data blends? And then what are the consequences of that blending? And so I think this is, it, it's not just going to be around the privacy by design in the immediate collection, but it's also going to be, well, what does that mean for making sure that we have containerization that matches the purpose of collection? We're not blending data and we're not creating um, unintended consequences. And so a good example of this is, you know, uh, access to track fitness data. Well, if I'm also processing that and it could potentially impact um, price modelling for insurance, have I been really clear with the customer when I collected fitness data that it may impact um, a premium for insurance or, or, you know, whether or not that's about, you know, methods of driving, whether or not it's employees, you know, the, the stuff that we're monitoring, say, outside of work and its impact inside of work. And so... However you look at this, there is a new wave, I think, of, of talent um, development. And I think it will be not just privacy, but it's also going to be the downstream impacts of um, the consequences of data collection if it hasn't been privacy by design. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, way and example, ultimately, that it is, you know, uh, companies are collecting everything that they can. And ultimately, the aggregation of information is going to lead to conclusions you can actually uh, a kind of unintended, un unintended uh, um, abstractions of data is kind of the way I call it. You know, the ability to kind of determine people's health and status and who they are and what they do and lifestyle choices and things like that based on collecting this information. And so is it the fact that we, we're, we actually need to put restrictions on certain things that can be determined from the data so we're not necessarily getting into areas that we could expose ourselves, I think, to lawsuits, right, really. Was, I think we started, you know, externalizing this information. People start getting impacted financially, getting denied for insurance or, you know, higher, uh, higher insurance rates based on driving patterns because that information is gathered from GPS systems that they have in their car, and that's actually a real thing that happened. And then there's some consequences to not necessarily having a policy in place, which is aligned with human expectations and client expectations. And I think that's a big thing going forward. Yeah, I, I think I think one of the the challenges from um, a development point of view is if if you ha don't have C-suite or you don't have very clear value proposition over whether the customer is the product and it's the data that you're trying to maximize return on or you have a core service where the data is ancillary to being able to, to, to deliver that, then it's really hard to have a training and, and talent development strategy as well because you need to be sending very clear internal signals around, okay, this is, this is what we're going to reward and foster from a culture point of view because this protects our employees, this protects our customers, this protects um, our reputation in the marketplace or, you know what, we, we want people that will help us take us just to the edge, make sure that we don't end up with a fine um, and can continue on as, as usual. And so I think before people start investing in their own development, they really need to understand what the cultural and strategic position of their employer is to understand where that focus needs to be. Absolutely. So Brad, what do you think? Oh, sorry, I was about to jump in on that. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 with what Katrina's just said, I, I just would like to, um, you know, agree completely. I mean, if the C-suite or whoever's actually leading the organisation is not clear on the direction of what, you know, privacy, privacy means to that, that company and, and who is the, what's the repercussion of that data from an end user point of view, then, you know, it's, it's a really cloudy judgment that's, that's putting the right candidates in those positions and what the outcomes are going to be. And I think that's, that's really key. I think Katrina put it far better than I just did, um, but I completely agree with, with what she said with regards to it's, if you haven't got the right people making the right decisions with regards to how the data is going to impact the end user, you've got issues. And I think putting talent in place, you know, and the wrong cultural fit, it can impact everyone all around. That's a great way to conclude the show. I think so. It's been fantastic, guys. I've not said too much. I think it's been wonderful. You've both, uh, you've both covered so much today. I just sit back and enjoying the conversation, to be honest. 
thanks Katrina for being part of the uh, training show this week thank you Brad um, I really uh, it's been an, a real pleasure to join and um, David it's it's really been great to have the conversation many inspiring thoughts as a result of um, your questions and and your um, uh, expertise in this area so thank you very much sounds like you're gonna have a very full dance card over the next five years Katrina I hope Good so <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And thanks, everyone, for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's training show. Uh, some very insightful, uh, thought-provoking topics were covered today. Makes you question the next time you're downloading an app. Um, so remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. You can reach Katrina on Twitter, which is at Katrina Dowell, which is spelled with a Y. David's on Twitter as well, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and look forward to next week.